Always rejoice. Pray without ceasing. In all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you all. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, God admonishes, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. In practice, for us Catholics, this is made possible to the praying of the rosary. But you might say, there are other religions who make use of prayer beads, just like the rosary, when they pray. Yes, there are religions who use prayer beads when they pray, but these are used merely as a help to count their prayers or private devotions. For instance, the Hindus, the Buddhists, Taoists, and Muslims have beads strung together which they hold in their hands, moving their fingers through each bead and counting to prayers as they do. The Hebrews, too, have the string with 150 knots to represent the 150 psalms. But the rosary for Catholic is a divine gift given by the Mother of God herself to humanity to be used by everyone who believes to seek for favor and to know and understand the life, death, and resurrection of her Son, Jesus Christ. It was in 1214 when the Blessed Mother appeared to Saint Dominic de Guzman and gave him the rosary. She asked him that instead of praying the 150 Psalms, just like the Hebrews do, using beads or knots, he instead should pray the Hail Mary, Our Father, and the Glory Be, every decade of the 15 decades which made up the original Dominican Rosary. A decade refers to 10 Hail Marys, preceded by Our Father, and ending with the Glory Be. Today we Catholics pray the five decades of this prayer with the Rosary. Our Catholic tradition teaches us that the Rosary is a gift of our Blessed Mother to humanity, given to Saint Dominic de Guzman, a Spanish priest, who during his time was fighting the spread of the Albingentian heresy. The Albingentians was a dualist religious movement during the Middle Ages that developed in southern France. It heretically taught that there were two gods, the good God of light, referred to as Jesus in the New Testament, and the God of darkness and evil, referred to as Satan, or the God of the Old Testament. The Albingenses thought that anything material was considered evil, including the body which was created by Satan. The soul created by the good God was imprisoned in evil flesh, and salvation was possible only through holy living and doing good works. At death, if the person has been spiritual enough, salvation comes to the believer. But if the person has not been good enough, he is reincarnated in the animal or another human being. The Albingensis denied the resurrection of the body since it was considered evil. It also thought that Jesus was God, but that he only appeared as a man while on earth. And frequently, suicide was practiced as a way to rid oneself of the evil human body. Saint Dominic de Guzman fought against this Albingentian heresy with great difficulty because the asceticism and humility of its followers compared to the great affluence of the clergy at that time brought many converts to this evangelistic movement. It was in 1208, while at prayer, that the Queen of Heaven appeared to Saint Dominic and gave him the rosary. She told him to pray it and teach all to pray it to save their souls. It is the one prayer the Blessed Mother said that will never fail. 
She could not stress it enough that it would be through prayer and penance that souls will be saved. St. Dominic began to preach and teach the rosary wherever he went, converting majority of the heretics in doing so. Later in the same year, the Queen of Heaven told St. Dominic that through the rosary and the scapular, she will save the world. St. Dominic frequently prayed the rosary psalter as he walked along the road and taught everyone he encountered how to pray it. The rosary became a very popular prayer among ordinary folks because of its ease and simplicity. As the Blessed Mother promised, the simple prayer preserved the faith of the people and helped squash the Albigensian heresy during the saint's time. When it was first introduced in the 12th century, this Marian Psalter consisted only of 150 Hail Marys, which was said only in the first part. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Period. That's it. But in 1475, Blessed Alan de la Roche, with his confraternity of the Rosary, added the prayers of the Creed, Pater, Ave Maria, and Glory Be, and the scriptural mysteries, joyful, sorrowful, and glorious in every decade of the Rosary, as how we pray today. Then the Rosary continued to develop to be aligned with the Church Magisterium. Its scriptural basis was established, citing Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, the Protevangelium, clearly explaining the Blessed Virgin Mary as the woman appointed by God to crush the head of the serpent. This scriptural passage reads, There shall be perennial enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman, Mother Mary, its offspring and her offspring. She shall crush its head as it waits for her heels. As such, it is Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that we begin to understand the tradition of the apparition on 1208, where Mother Mary, the co-redemptrix, holding the baby Jesus, our one Redeemer, gives the rosary to Saint Dominic, instructing him to pray it, and with the scapular also told him, one day through the rosary and the scapular, she shall save the world. We Catholics believe that there is only one mediator, Jesus Christ, the God-man who ransomed us from sin. We also believe that by his passion and death on Mount Calvary, Christ already saved collectively humanity. But our Catholic faith also teaches us that our salvation is not automatic. It is freely subjective and personal. It simply means we can individually accept or reject God's redemptive act on Mount Calvary. St. Bernard said that as man prefigured in the image of Adam and as woman prefigured by Eve, both have collaborated for our damnation. So it would be to another man, Jesus, the new Adam, and another woman, Mary, the new Eve, that what had been destroyed would be restored to their cooperation. Doubtless to say, Jesus Christ alone was all sufficient for our redemption. Yet it was more fitting that each sex should take part in our redemption when both took part in our corruption. St. Anselm explained that God created man without his consent. And when it was lost by sin, he could not redeem it without his cooperation. Mary is therefore called co-operatrix with her son in our justification because God has committed to her keeping all the graces that he has reserved for us. St. Bernard affirmed that all men, past, present, and future, should regard her as the means and negotiator to the salvation of all ages. It was in 1571 during the famous Battle of Lepanto that the second part of the Hail Mary was added. 
In that year, St. Pius V ordered Don Juan of Austria to rally the people to pray the rosary while its battleships fought its decisive war in Lepanto against the Muslim aggressors. Lepanto was the last bastion of Christianity during the Muslim conquests of Europe. After the people of Austria obeyed the Pope and rallied in the main street of Vienna praying the rosary, the Blessed Mother together with her angels routed the Muslim fleet sinking and destroying most of their battleships, and never again to regroup in retaliation against the Christian fleet. The second half of the prayer of the Hail Mary became the battle cry for those who invoked the help of the Mother of God, the Mother of the Church, at the hour of great peril. And indeed it does. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Two years after the Jubilee year of 2000, Pope John Paul II added the luminous mysteries or the mysteries of light to the rosary, which contemplates the public life of Jesus Christ. The Catechism of the Catholic Church 675 tells us of the end times, which will be characterized by the loss of faith, an increase of diabolical manifestations. Nowhere in the history of humanity have we seen the blatant and open practice of satanic rituals and diabolical activities perpetuated at times by influential people than now. It is as if they are proclaiming victory in all facets of life and that evil reigns supreme in all parts of the world. No less than Paul VI prophesied that from the cracks of the church, the smoke of Satan comes in. Catholic parents today are panicking for they see their faith disintegrating inside out of the church. Their children and grandchildren have already lost their faith with sex education imposed in schools as early as kindergarten. The sexual revolution has spread not only in almost all countries, but also in all ages. When one loses purity, one becomes blind in his faith, because as Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, Blessed are the pure, they will see God. Therefore, if you lose your purity, you don't see God. In the Acts of the Apostles, St. Peter warns the Jews during Pentecost, Save yourself from this perverse generation. How true is this admonition more today? And our Redeemer made it possible that we could truly realize this warning. He sent His Mother to us, the core redemptrix, using the rosary and scapular to save us. The time of St. Dominic was no different from our time. In 1917 in Farima, our Blessed Mother told the three children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco, many souls are going to hell because no one prays and does penance for them. With the consecration to the hearts of Jesus and Mary and living the communion of reparation lifestyle, the message of prayer and penance to save souls from being damned is fulfilled. Three things were mentioned by the Blessed Mother to the Farima that needed to be prevented. First, from souls going to hell. Second, from terrible wars that will annihilate many nations, leaving millions of people dying in minutes and envying the dead. And third, for the Church and the Pope to suffer more persecutions. Our Lady of Fatima, the same Virgin Mary that appeared to St. Dominic, requested the same prayers and weapons, the Rosary and the Scapular. The Blessed Mother clearly asked, Consecrate Russia and the Word to her Immaculate Heart. The sign of consecration is by wearing the brown scapular and praying St. John Paul II's prayer of total consecration. Totus tuus Maria ego sum, omnia mea tua sum. All I am is yours, all I have is yours. 
The Blessed Mother also said, Sin no more. This we can do by repenting and making reparation. The sinless, grace-filled lifestyle is what we call the communion of reparation lifestyle, as lived daily and monthly. Four letters summarize this lifestyle. Care, C-A-R-E. C, for confession. We need to confess our sins and to go to confession regularly, to promise to sin no more to the God who loves us so much. A, for adoration. We need to prolong our union with Jesus, really, truly, substantially present in the Eucharist, in all the tabernacles throughout the world, by visiting and adoring His true presence, even at least an hour every day. We do this in reparation for our sins, to seek healing from both our spiritual and physical infestation and sickness. R for rosary. Our Lord said, pray always, so as not to fall into sin. He sent us the Blessed Mother with her rosary to teach us how we can do this simply and as often as we can, so that Satan's temptation will have no effect in us. E for Eucharistic sacrifice to the Mass, not only every Sunday, but every day. If we make it part of our regular schedule to hear Mass and receive Jesus in Holy Communion, what problem, what challenge, what difficulties there in life that we cannot face and hurdle when we are strengthened 24-7, 365 days with Jesus, truly living body, blood, soul, and divinity in us. Each time we receive Jesus in the Holy Communion, we're empowered by Him to face and do anything for His greater glory, the salvation of souls, and the honor of the Blessed Mother. It is the promise of the Blessed Mother that through the rosary and the scapular, she will save the world. Therefore, if by wearing her brown scapular, by kissing it every morning, as a renewal of our consecration and by living communion of reparation lifestyle, we live out concretely our act of consecration to her. Then we have helped realize the Blessed Mother's promise who loves us so much. At Fatima on 13 of October 1917, Our Lady told Sister Lucia, Jacinta and Francesco, I want everyone to wear the scapular as a sign of consecration to my Immaculate Heart. In 1254, almost 48 years after Our Lady appeared to Saint Dominic, she gave a similar message to Saint Simon Stock, where she asked that the scapular be made for everyone as a pledge of salvation. She told Saint Simon of Stock what the scapular was for. First. It is a sign of salvation. Second, it is a protection against danger. Third, it is a pledge for peace. Fourth, whosoever dies wearing this scapular will not suffer eternal fire. And fifth, on the Saturday that follows after the person's death, the Blessed Mother will take the soul to heaven. If that person dies wearing the scapular and have been faithful to it. In 1942, Pius XII said that to wear the brown scapular is a sign of consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Truly then, with the rosary and the scapular, the Blessed Mother shall save the world. We know and have heard the glories of the Battle of Lepanto that happened in 1571. But what really transpired during that great moment? For more than three years, Pope Pius V had labored hard to forewarn Europe of the deadly Muslim build-up in the shipyard of Istanbul. On the 7th of October 1571, before the battle began and upon the urgings of Pope Pius V, the Austrians, led by Don Juan of Austria, organized what we call a rosary rally 
which was attended by thousands of Catholics at that time. At dawn on October 7, the young Don Juan, together with all his soldiers, went to confession, received Holy Communion, and spent hours of adoration in the Blessed Sacrament, while many stood vigil that night praying the Rosary in churches, invoking Mary, the help of Christians. Don Juan was buoyed out by all spiritual preparation. The young admiral, who was only 22 years old when he became commander of his fleet, felt confident in his battle plan. He had taken care to have his whole fleet rehearse their roles in the quiet seas of the Adriatic just before turning towards Lepanto. Don Juan had vowed to Pope Pius V to seek out and destroy the threatening entry of the enemy into Europe. All these men spent much of the night before the Battle of October 7 in prayer, knowing that the fate of their Catholic civilization was at stake. Nature was against them. The uncertainties of the changing winds and the choppy seas and the speed of two unrushing lines of ships rapidly closing on each other could create unpredictable havoc. The odds were against them, but the Christians had a secret weapon with them, the rosary. Then the first volley of cannons fired through the air from the Muslim fleets towards Don Juan's armada. The young admiral's ship fired back, but it seemed someone was already fighting for them, Mother Mary and her angels. In four hours, the battle was over. More than 40,000 men from the Turkish fleet died, and thousand more were wounded. More than in any other battle in history, more even than at Salamis, or in years to come at the Somme. Never again did the Muslim fleet pose a grave danger to Europe from the south, although of course Muslim fleets kept busy expanding their bases in the African coast, harassing western ships and territories across the Mediterranean. As news of the great victory on October 7 reached shore, church bells rang all over the cities and countryside of Europe. For months, Pope Pius V had urged Catholics to set the daily rosary on behalf of the morale and good fortune of the Christian forces, and above all, for the successful outcome to the highly risky preemptive strike against the Turkish fleet. Pope Pius V then declared October 7 as the Feast of Our Lady of Victory. But 1573, Pope Gregory XIII changed the title to the Feast of the Holy Rosary, which in 1584 memoirs of a Dominican historian, Prior Juan Lopez, mentioned that fittingly, this Feast of the Holy Rosary is to be celebrated in memory and in perpetual gratitude for the miraculous victory that the Lord gave to His Christian people that day against the Turkish Armada. I do not know all the answers to the questions of when the end times would finally come and when all these evils around us will stop, but I do know that if we have recourse to the Blessed Mother Mary and bid her request to pray the rosary constantly, regularly, if possible, every day, we will be victorious. As I have said previously, she appeared at Fatima in all places. Even the Holy Bishop Fulton Sheen noticed this, and so Mary as the bridge between us and the Muslims. Here, I would like to point out two historic coincidences. First of all, Mary appeared at Fatima the same year the Ottomans, the Muslim Empire, lost control of Palestine. Second, in recent years, there has been resurgence of Muslim influence and aggravation in the world. We only have to watch the news to know how delicate the situation is today. More than ever, now is the time when we need Mary, Our Lady of the Rosary, to help maintain peace in the world to prevent wars and help in saving souls from useless, unprovided death. Third, the word rosary. 
It is of interest to know that the symbol of pro-life movement is the rose, and that the rosary comes from the Latin word meaning rose. Note, too, the connection of Our Lady of Guadalupe with the pro-life movement among Catholic circles, because she appears pregnant to St. Juan Diego. Interestingly enough, Mary is depicted as she appears in the book of Revelation, and this image has an important connection with the Christian Muslim conflict as well. More on another time. In Mary's apparition at Fatima, she says that Russia must be consecrated in order to stop her from spreading her errors across the world. It seems as though the errors of Russia are communism and atheism. Communism fell in the 90s after the consecration of the word to the Immaculate Heart was done. But the negative effects are still here, and they are increasing. Moral decadence and atheism are still a growing phenomena around the world. Here again we see that if we have recourse to Mary, we can overcome the evils of secularism. Fourth, one of the greatest sins of our time is the sin of lust. We are contracepting ourselves out of existence. Divorce rates are higher than ever. And the pornography industry is a billion-dollar enterprise. Mary, however, is the virgin most chaste. Traditionally, Mary is seen as the saint to go for help with chastity. The reason is that she, above all others, had complete control over her flesh. Incidentally, one of the other saints most known in, in his chastity is St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas was a Dominican, a member of the order in charge of promoting the rosary. Our Catholic Church is undoubtedly getting sick, very sick. There are evil people inside the church who seek to ruin her. They cannot, however, because God is in control. Perpetrators of this evil can hide tradition and very good morals. They can water down liturgy so that the Catholic Church would become less strict and appear to be more nice for everyone's comfort. Priests can give heretical sermons and the religious can demand equal pay, equal rights in the exercise of their apostolate, if not gender. The enemies of the Church can make unjust laws. They can imprison and even kill us. Priests can give communions to dogs. Yes, this happened in this past year. And criminals can desecrate our church. But at the end of the day, we still have our relationship with God because this is the one thing we alone have a control with. With the help of Mary and the Rosary, we need not fear, however, that our relationship with God will be taken away from us. Because no matter what Christ's enemies do, we will always have the rosary. With or without beads, we can always have recourse to Our Lady conceived without sin. Nobody can take away the rosary. We will have the rosary no matter what, because all it takes is the ability to pray. Until the end of times, this will be the weapon against evil. Padre Pio called the rosary the weapon, and when Mary gave it to St. Dominic, she repaired it as the battering ram against heresy. One of the popes in the Middle Ages called it the scourge of the devil. Remember this, the rosary is the solution to the evils of modern times. No matter what happens, we can trust in Mary's protection to the rosary. This should be a comforting thought that at the end of the day, as one Dominican prior told me, you keep saying the rosary, the Blessed Mother will take care of you. This is very true. What can go wrong if Mary is in our side? Who is better in taking care of us than the Mother of God herself? Remember in our previous episode, the significance of the Blessed Mother? She is the greatest of God's creatures. 
and the bridge between God and creation. In her, God became man. The rosary is the solution to the times in our personal life and in the life of the church and the world. We simply have to be willing to pray and trust in the mercy of God. As Pope Pius IX said, Give me an army saying the rosary and I will conquer the world. St. Dominic de Guzman, founder of the Order of the Preachers, son of the Rosary, said, The Rosary is the greatest weapon against evil. Nobody who perseveres in saying the Rosary will be damned, because she obtains for her servants the grace of true contritions for their sins, and by means of this they obtain God's forgiveness and mercy. Our Lady of Mount Carmel said in her apparition in 1254, the scapular is made for everyone. It is a pledge of salvation. O oh, loving Mother Mary, you are the mother of the church. We are all members of the church by virtue of our baptism. We are under siege everywhere, inside out. The loss of faith and the increased diabolical manifestations are widespread, and they seem to be so commonplace nowadays. With the current situation all over the world now, we can all panic and feel desperate. But knowing you will never abandon us, as what Isaiah 49 confirms, we will never be discouraged. You have given us two weapons, the rosary and the scapular by meditating upon the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus, in the Rosary, and by renewing our consecration to you daily while kissing the scapular, we know that Satan, who masterminds all the chaos in the world, will one day, even now, be totally defeated. We beg of you, never abandon us in the hour of evil. You love us so much, and we love you also. We ask this to the most powerful intercession of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.